So, today we will discuss the integration of the real valued functions on an interval basically we will do the integration integ integration of real valued functions on an interval say a b. So, we will discuss today this part. Okay. Now, in this integral of the real valued function, we have the two types of integral we will discuss. One is the Riemann integral, another one is the Riemann integral and then Riemann Estelle Estelle Jess integral. In fact, the Riemann Estelle integral is the generalization of the Riemann integral and in the particular case we can say this. Now, this is all uh, a definite integral you know. So, it is an extension part of the definite integral when we go for the Riemann integration. So, let us see before going the uh, Riemann integral, let us see first the definition how to define the Riemann integral. Uh, suppose, a b be an interval, let a b uh, be a given interval. interval by a partition of a b by a partition p of a b we mean we mean a finite set of point set of points say x naught x 1 x 2 x n where a is say x naught which is less than all equal to x 1 less than equal to x 2 less than equal to x n and less than equal to x n which is say b. So, basically this is our interval a b what we are doing we are partitioning this interval into a, a sub interval by choosing the point x naught x 1 x 2 and x n in between a b where the x naught is the initial point coinciding with a, x n is the terminal point last point coinciding with b. These x 1, x 2, x n are the distinct point and maybe sometimes it may be overlapping that is we can start with x naught x 1 then go for this x 2 start with x 1 like that way, which also possible for that. So, let us this set of collection which final set of these points over the interval a b which satisfy this condition is called the partition of the interval a b. Okay. So, <laughs> let delta x stands for delta x i stands for x i minus x i minus 1 where i vary 1 to n. Suppose, we have this point say here we have x i minus 1 and this is say x i. So, this interval we are denoting as delta x i, x i minus x i minus 1 is delta x. Okay. Now, let us suppose f be a bounded function, let f be a bounded real function, real function, bounded real function defined, defined over the interval a b over the interval a b. Okay. Now, since function f we are choosing to be a bounded function and we have divided the interval a b into a sub intervals like delta x 1, delta x 2, delta x n it is the length of these sub intervals and each sub intervals x i n each flow. So, we can choose uh, for each partition so, corresponding to each partition P of A B, we take or we take or we uh, assume or we put 
m i as the supremum value of the function f x when x varies from x i minus 1 to x i. mean this is our interval x i minus 1, this is x i. Function f is a bounded function, need not be continuous, but it is a bounded function. So, once it is a bounded function, over the interval, close interval x i minus 1 to x i, then obviously, it will attain its supremum and minimum value and infimum value over this interval, because it is a bounded function. Okay. So, supremum will exist, infimum will also exist. So, let the infimum is denoted by small m, m i. This is the infimum value of the function f x over this interval x i minus 1 to x i. Is it okay? Now, <laughs> let us take the sum, consider the sum m i delta x i and i is 1 to n. Means, over this interval, this is our interval a b we have partitioned this thing as x naught, x 1, x 2, x i minus 1, x i and so on this is x n. And here is something like this function f x. Okay. So, over this interval, over this interval function have attains is supremum value say at this point and infimum value is suppose this point. So, we multiply the the supremum value of the function that is this is our capital M i by the length of this interval. So, when you multiply this by the length of the interval you are taking basically this rectangle area of this rectangle is it not. So, this we are doing for each sub intervals over each sub intervals we are calculating this sum and taking the sum. Okay. This sum be denoted by as uh, by u p f because this sum depends on p as well as the function f because supremum is taken of all the uh, of the function f over this sub interval. So, over each interval m i may change depending on the function as well as the partition <laughs> delta x i depends on the length of the partition. So, if they change the partition delta x i will also change. So, this sum we call it as a upper sum, upper sum of the function f over this partition corresponding to the partition p. Similarly, when we write m i delta x i, i is equal to 1 to n, this sum we denote by l p f n is called the lower sum of the function f over the partition p over partition p. So, upper sum of f over p and lower sum of f over p. Okay. Now, if we change the partition the upper sum and lower sum will keep on changing. So, but what is this, but this upper sum and lower sum will always be a bounded function bounded thing by since function f is bounded over the interval a b. So, it means, so there exist the two numbers small m and capital M such that the value of the function f x will always fall between these two range because f is bounded. So, bounded means it will have the least number and the largest number. So, m and capital M will lies for all x lying between x and b a and b. So, this is true is it not. So, if we take any partition p. So, for any partition p or for every partition p we have m times b minus a will always be less than equal to lower sum of this which is less than equal to upper sum of function f over the partition p which is less than equal to m into b minus a. Why? Because 
this lower sum and upper sum over this interval x i minus 1 lower sum will always be less than equal to upper sum over each sub interval because m i is the infimum value capital m i is the supremum value. So, because of this it will be less than equal to upper sum then take the summation over all such sub intervals. So, obviously the lower sum will all total lower sum will always be less than the upper sum this is one thing. Second one is <laughs> when we take the function f f is bounded by m and capital M. So, this is the length of the interval. So, if we multiply this by the b minus a the total length of the interval then this will be the minimum area bounded by a curve whose lower value is m and the length over the length b minus a and this is the upper bound for the function f. So, m into so m into b minus a will lie between these two bound clear. Therefore, our lower sum and upper sum is a bounded function. So, it is a bounded set. So, lower sum and upper sum are bounded are for all bounded or they form the bounded set are bounded. So, for the partition for various partition various for any various partition it forms it forms a bounded set. Equipment changing the partition the lower and upper sum will change, but it will remain bounded between these two limits. So, it is bounded. So, once it is bounded <laughs> it means we can take the infimum value and supremum value of this. So, this is upper bounded by this. So, the infimum value of this will also exist supremum value of this will also exist because this is lower bounded by this infimum value will be at the most equal to this term and supremum value at the most equal to this. So, what we see here that uh, if we take from this uh, uh, from this one. So, we define so, uh, so we define the inf a to b bar upper f d x as the infimum value of the parties uh, of the upper sum p f f where infimum is taken over all the partition infimum is taken over all such partition p. Similarly, a to b lower bar f d x is the supremum value of the lower sum p f where the supremum is taken over self partition where so where infimum and supremum are taken over over all partitions all partitions p of a b is it okay and since these are bounded so supremum and infimum will exist hence our this integral will exist this is called the upper riemann integral this is known as the upper Riemann integral and this one is called the lower Riemann integral. This is called the lower Riemann integral. Okay. So, we get this uh, lower Riemann integral of f over the interval a b. So, lower Riemann integral of f over a b this upper Riemann integral and lower Riemann integral. That is what we say as f is Riemann. Okay. Now, if lower Riemann integral and upper Riemann integral coincides that is they have its same value and independent of course, it is a partition then we say the f is Riemann integrable. Okay. So, we say if, if the upper <laughs> and lower upper and lower Riemann integral r integrals Riemann integrals r equal r equal then we say that f is Riemann integrable f is Riemann integrable uh, f is Riemann integrable Oh, on the closed interval a b 
on the closed interval a b and we denote this and we write it as f belongs to r where r denotes the class of where r denotes the class of all or k set class of all Riemann 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 integrable functions integrable functions Riemann integrable functions ok. The common value we denote by the common value is denoted by integral a to b f dx or integral a to b f x dx or sometimes to differentiate between to differentiate it from other integrals like Lehman stage integral we use this uh, say we use the Riemann integrable over r ok. So, here we will take the Riemann integral a to b f d x as usual otherwise some author write like r a b also to show the Riemann integral, but here this notation we will use for the Riemann stress integral ok. So, some author use, but here we will not write we will take up only for the Riemann stress integral. Riemann stale stale jazz integral ok. This we will take up later on what is this Riemann integral. We denote this by r, so that it will differentiate between these two ok. So, this is what we are. So, what this shows that if f is a bounded function f is a bounded function then upper sum and lower sum will definitely exist and upper integral and lower integral will exist. Now, the question of whether they are equal or not if they are equal then we say the existence of the Riemann integral is there if they are not equal then we say the Riemann integral does not exist ok. So, existence part we will take later on first let us see the other integral which is known as the Riemann stress integral a generalization of our Riemann integral and then we will study the Riemann stress integral in detail. So, as a particular case we can get all the results for Riemann integral also ok. So, let us see the next definition for Riemann stale J's integral ok. <laughs> now, what we do here in this is uh, before going a b uh, Riemann st ok. So, we will take let alpha be a monotonic be a monotonically monotonically increasing function. on the interval a b on the interval a b ok. Now, alpha is monotonically increasing function. So, alpha and alpha b are finite uh, assuming that since alpha a and alpha b these are real number uh, alpha and alpha b are finite. So, we can say alpha is a bounded function. So, alpha is bounded on the interval a b because it is monotonically increasing. So, alpha a and alpha b these are real numbers they are finite hence it has a finite and all the values of alpha lying between alpha a and alpha b because it is monotonically increasing function hence it will be a bounded function on a b. So, once it is bounded then let us consider the same partition consider the partition p of a b as a is x naught less than x 1 
less than equal to x 2 less than equal to x n which is say b. Okay. Then consider instead of this delta x i now I consider the delta alpha i we consider delta alpha i h the value of alpha at a point x i minus the value of the alpha at a point x i minus 1 because this is the interval x i minus 1 this is x i. So, earlier what we were doing we were taking the x i minus x i minus 1 as the delta x i. Now, alpha is taken as a monotonic function. So, when considering the value of the alpha x i minus alpha x i and denoted by delta alpha i. So, obviously, this delta alpha i will be greater than or equal to 0 because alpha is a monotonic function increasing function. So, alpha x i will be greater than or equal to alpha x i minus 1. Therefore, this will be a non negative quantity. Now, for any real function for any real function which f which is bounded which is bounded on the close interval a b on the close interval b write we write the sigma m i delta alpha i i is 1 to n as u of p f n alpha we are the m i means the supremum of f x over x lying between x i minus 1 to x i same thing ok and l p f alpha we are writing as i is 1 to n a small m i delta alpha i. Now, this is again we call it the upper sum and the lower sum of the function f with respect to the alpha alpha it depends on alpha is it not. So, now this upper sum and lower sum we um, will be defined in terms of the function f that is m i n small f i and that alpha i where alpha is this one delta alpha is this one. Now, in a similar way choose now. So, define the upper integral a to b f d alpha h infimum of u p f alpha where infimum is taken over all such partition p and lower sum is denoted by this supremum of l p f alpha <coughs> where again supremum <coughs> is taken over all partition where infimum and supremum is taken over all such partition all such partition all such partition p of a b all partition of a b supremum n. Now, if this further because again this is bounded function. So, supremum infimum will exist. So, this will these two integral will exist this is called the upper Riemann Steltzitz integral of the function f of the function f with respect to alpha with respect to alpha over the interval a b and this will be called it as a lower and this ok this we call it as a lower Riemann integral in a similar way we write lower Riemann stage integral of a with respect to alpha over a b. Okay. Now, if both these values coincide then we say f is Riemann stage integral. So, if let it be 1 and 2 uh, is better we write it okay. let it be 1 2. So, if 1 and 2 coincide if 1 and 2 coincides have the same value that is are equal are equal then we denote we denote their common values their common values 
common value by integral a to b f d alpha and is known as is known as the Riemann Estel Jess integral a Riemann Estel of f with respect to alpha over closed interval a b that is what is ok. So, the class of all Mm, the class uh, let r alpha denotes the class of all Riemann Estel J integrals of f with respect to alpha over a b. So, in this case we say, so we say that f belongs to r alpha ok. There we are denoting simply by r, here we are denoting r alpha Riemann stretch is integral of the function f over in both the case I am considering f to be a bounded function need not be a continuous. Here also not alpha need not be a continuous function remark alpha may not be continuous function continuous it is simply an monotonic increasing function it's still this okay. second one is if we take alpha x equal to x then the Riemann stretch integrals convert then we say f is integrable then Riemann integral is then Riemann integral is the uh, is seen to be a special case of Riemann of Riemann still J s integrals. Thus, simply alpha x equal to x will be reduced the Riemann stage integral will give the Riemann stage integral and from there we can get the Riemann integral easily. Okay. So, this is an extension Riemann stretch integral is an extension of our Riemann integral. Hence, whatever the property we will drive for the Riemann stretch integral as a particular case when you choose alpha x equal to x, then you get the corresponding property of the Riemann integral. And remember we will always denote r by a Riemann integral and Riemann stretch integral by r alpha. Second part is that earlier we have used the a to b f x d x is it not where x is the variable of integration. Now, here also one can write it f x d alpha x, but this is not a very uh, uh, common notation. So, normally the common notation is a to b f d alpha, but it means that a to b f x d alpha x. Okay. So, that is the meaning of this. Okay. Now, we come to uh, now uh, some properties of the our uh, partition that p which you are choosing partition p ok. So, for over any partition p with the, because this is our uh, taken as the p as the partition of this then what is this uh, properties of the partition let us see some properties which will be needed in establishing the existence of this integral because we have not so far defined or so far obtained any results or justify whether this integral will exist even if f is a bounded function. Okay. So, in fact, we will show the justification whether f is a bounded function both the Riemann integral and Riemann stretch integral will exist f is continuous it will exist f is monotonic we can also get the uh, Riemann stretch integral provided under certain condition. So, existence result we will take up afterward first let us see what are the properties enjoyed by this partition. So, let us see properties of partition P. So, 
we say the refinement of the partition refinement of p p is the partition so by the partition p star the partition p star is a refinement is a refinement of p of the partition p of partition p if p stars covers p totally that is every point if every point every point of p p is a point of p star then we say this because what is the partition because the partition p this is our p partition means is the collection of the points x naught x1 x2 xn such that satisfying this condition this condition that's all so if we take any other partition <coughs> that will also contain the points of this now if this partition if every point of p is also a point of p star it means when you take the p star then these points will definitely there apart from there there may be some more point included here say x star x double star and so on this point may also be included apart from this so that's why then every point of the p becomes the p star plus some extra point are available in this so instead of uh, partitioning this uh, into the n sub interval we are partitioning n plus 1 sub interval n plus 2 in intervals by introducing more point in between but earlier partition retain as it is then it is called the partition or refinement of the partition okay because the partition may be different p1 and p2 are two different partitions suppose this is our p1 okay say one of the partition x0 x1 x2 and say xn is equal to b this is one partition i take another partition ab say p2 which is entirely different say by not less than by 1 less than by 2 less than by n which is b now this x0 x2 x n and by 1 by 2 by n may not be the same point but if we take the partition p1 union p2 this partition as p star then what happens is a and b are there then all the points x0 then may be the y0 then x1 and continues this like this xn equal to b and y n is this so all the points are taken together which are partitioning the interval in uh, a b into 2 n sub intervals basically so this becomes the refinement of the partition p 1 as well as you can say refinement partition p 2 so in particular even if the partition p is there if i just include one more point in it then obviously the number of sub interval increases and in that way we are getting a refinement of the previous partition p okay so this is the concept of the refinement clear so obviously here uh, so clearly if p1 and p2 are two different partition different partition of the interval ab then their union p1 union p2 is the say equal to p star is the common common refinement is the common refinement of these p1 and p2 provided of course p star is this union of this okay and if p star this then is the then then p star is the common refinement if p star is this then this is a common refinement so this is what we are okay now result which we are talking is so let us the first result is if p star is a refinement refinement of the partition p 
if p star is a refinement of the partition p then the lower sum increases then lower sum l p f alpha will be less than or equal to l p star f alpha while the upper sum p f alpha this upper sum decreases that is upper sum of p f star uh, p star f alpha. So, lower sum increases and upper sum decreases. So, when you divide the interval a b into a partition p into a partition p and if I include few more point introduce few more point in it and getting the partition p star which is the refinement of p then in that case the lower sum will be a, a will form an increasing function will be an in, increase or lower sum will increase while the upper sum will decrease so that's the proof so proof is this okay i assume let p be the partition p be the partition say a is x0 less than equal to x1 less than equal to x 2 x n equal to say b be the partition of a b and p star is suppose contains just one more point say more one more point uh, uh, just one point more than just one point more than the partition p that is suppose that is suppose there exist uh, there exist or uh, 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 there is an extra point extra point x star lying between lying lying in this sub interval x i minus 1 to x i lying this where x i minus 1 and x i are two consecutive consecutive points of p. So, what we are doing is that this is our interval a b here we are having the partition x 1 x 2 x n here is x i minus 1 this is say x i and then x n is this okay, like this. Now, what we are doing is this is our partition p. Now, p we are just increasing one more point say here x star x star. So, this new partition becomes p star and it is the refinement of p. So, clearly p star is the refinement of p. others I am not changing only in one in sub interval I am taking one extra point that is all. So, it becomes a refinement of this. Now, with this uh, point extra what we want to claim that lower sum will increase and upper sum decrease. So, let us prove first for the lower sum. Okay. So, let w 1 is the infimum of the function f x over the interval x i minus 1 to x star, while the w 2 is the infimum value of the function f x when x lying between x star to x i. Okay. And m i is the infimum value of the function f x when x is varying over x i minus 1 to x i. So, clearly this m uh, w 1 will be uh, greater than equal to m i and w 2 will also be greater than equal to m i because this m i is taken over the whole interval x i minus 1 to x i as the infimum value is taken 
and then these are the infimum value over the partition of this sub interval. So, obviously, this infimum value may be small. So, w 1 is greater than equal to m i, w 2 is greater than equal to m 2 n. And hence, consider the lower sum with respect to the partition p star of the function f with respect to alpha minus the lower sum of with respect to the partition p and f and alpha. So, what we get is over this interval uh, p star is the sum of the two interval this is our x star. So, first you take over this and then this. So, here the lower uh, and the infimum value is denoted by w 1. So, it is the w 1 and then value at a point alpha x star minus the value of the function alpha at the point x i minus 1. So, this is the value of this uh, lower sum over this int minus and then uh, 4. So, this will be multiplied by alpha ok w 1 multiplied by this then over the second interval w 2 w 2 this is alpha x i minus alpha x star. So, this is the lower sum of p uh, over the partition p star ok this plus this minus the lower sum of the partition uh, function f with respect to the partition p. So, that is equal to m i into alpha x i minus alpha x i minus 1 with respect to the alpha. Now, let us combine just. So, w 1 minus m i and within bracket you get alpha x star minus alpha x i minus 1 is it not? Then plus w 2 minus m i alpha x i minus alpha x star. Now, w 1 is greater than equal to m i, w 2 is greater than equal to m i. So, these two things are positive. Alpha is a monotonic increasing function, x star is greater than or equal to x i minus 1. So, value of x star at alpha at x star will be more than value of this one. Similarly, here x i is greater greater than equal to x star. So, this will be positive. So, it is greater than equal to 0. So, what it shows that when the we increase the partition, when we get the refinement of the partition by introducing the points more point then lower sum increases and that proves the first part of this. Similarly, so this proves that lower sum of the function f with respect to the partition p is less than equal to lower sum of the function f with respect to the partition p star which is the refinement of this increases. Similarly, upper sum we can show uh, that p f alpha is greater than equal to upper sum of p star f alpha. So, this is what we proved. Okay. So, this is what okay. now we come to uh, property which is related to uh, using this partitioning uh, interval and property of the sum in lower sum integral and upper integral. So, this we put it as a form of theorem. What the theorem says is uh, the lower integral of the function f and uh, lower Riemann stresses integral of a function f over the interval a b will always be less than equal to the upper Riemann in stresses integral of the function f with respect to alpha over a b. So, obviously, this result is also valid for a Riemann integral because when alpha x becomes x then lower integ Riemann integral is always be less than equal to upper Riemann integral. Okay, the proof of this. <coughs> Let us see the proof. Uh, let p star uh, be the common refinement refinement of two partition of two partitions p 1 and p 2 and p 2. Okay. So, let us take the partition p. So, let p star is the union of p 1 and p 2. So, is the uh, so obviously, so p star is equal to p 1 union because it is a common refinement. So, we can take 
P star is the P 1 union P 2. So, it is the refinement for P 1 as well as refinement for P 2. Okay. Now, since we have already proved that when you have a refinement of a partition, then lower sum increases and upper sum decreases. So, using this one we get, so we get the lower sum of the function f with respect to the partition p 1 uh, over the partition p 1 and with respect to alpha is less than or equal to the lower sum of the function f over the refinement p star with respect to alpha because p star is the refinement. So, lower sum increases, but this is always be less than or equal to upper sum because lower sum is always be less than or equal to upper sum with respect to the same partition. However, we will prove it is also true for a general in general lower sum will always be less than or equal to upper sum whatever the partition you choose that we will show it next and f and then alpha and then now upper sum decreases upper sum decreases means it is less than or equal to p to f alpha because p star is the refinement. So, obviously, the upper sum respect to p star is less than or equal to the upper sum of this. Okay. So, from here what we conclude this implies that the lower sum with respect to the partition p 1 f alpha is always be less than or equal to the upper sum with respect to the partition p 2 f alpha. It means if we take any two arbitrary partition p 1 and p 2 then always the and function f is fixed alpha is fixed then lower sum of that function f with respect to alpha will always be less than or equal to the upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha whatever the partition is choose. For a same partition this is true, but for in arbitrary partition also we have shown that this lower sum is always be less than or equal to upper sum is it ok. Now, what we do is here let us fix up the uh, p 2 fix partition p 2 ok and let take the supremum value supremum is taken over supremum is taken over all p 2 all uh, uh, let us seek first that all p 1 all p 1 this I am fixing and here I am taking the supremo of all p 1. So, when you take the supremo of all p 1 then this will give the what it will give the lower sum. So, we get from here is a bar lower b f d alpha this is the lower Lehman integral stacy integral will give and then less than equal to u p 2 f alpha. Now, again you take the infimum value then in the right hand side take infimum over suprema is taken over all p 2. So, we get from when you take the infimum then it will give the upper sum we get from here is f d alpha is less than or equal to upper sum of this p 2 f d alpha when this proves the result. Okay. So, this <laughs> so it is in test results. Okay. Yes. Now, the question arises as we have seen in the first way that what is the guarantee if f is a bounded function. Okay, we have defined the Riemann integral, we have defined the Riemann stretch integral, but then what is the guarantee whether they are equal or not? Because if they are not equal, there is no point of it going further. So, the existence of their integrals is important when the both the integral coincide both will have a same value. So, under what condition both these integral lower integral and upper integral exist and have a equal value. So, that we can say f is Riemann integral integral function or f is Riemann stresses integral. So, this theorem gives a little bit about the existing part of this existence of Riemann still just or Riemann integral because both I am dealing at a time or Riemann integral. Okay, that is one. The theorem is 
let f belongs to the Riemann stretches integral uh, with respect to alpha on a b. Okay. Then we say f is Riemann stretch integral or oh, later uh, remove it f is Riemann stretch integral f is Riemann state just integrate function integrable function over the interval a b with respect to alpha if and only if if and only if for every f signal for every f signal greater than 0 there exist there exist a partition there exist a partition p such that such that the upper sum p f alpha upper demand sum minus upper demand stretch in sum lower sum l p f alpha is less than f sin alpha. So, this condition is a necessary as well as sufficient for the existence of a function to be Riemann stretch integral. So, in particular when we take alpha x equal to x, so we can say as a uh, particular or as a corollary we can say f belongs to the Riemann integral on a b if and only if if and only if for every f sin l greater than 0 there exist a partition p such that the upper sum of the function a with respect to uh, uh, partition p minus lower sum of a with respect to partition p is less than f sin l. So, okay. so, this is for the Riemann uh, necessary and sufficient condition for Riemann integral, this is for the necessary and sufficient condition for Riemann stretch integral. Okay. Now, we will see the proof next time. Thank you very much. Okay. That is all.